much of the world remains optimistic about China, despite the global economic downturn. Foreign-funded investment hit record highs in hotspots like Shanghai and Shenzhen last year. Guo Yuwa has details. The World Fortune 500 Dow Chemical Company has declared it would close down 20 production facilities in high-cost regions and suspend the operations of 180 factories worldwide. But in Shanghai Pudong New Area, it had made two new investments amounting to $62 million to build R&D and information centers. This is because the company is optimistic about China. You know, we'll go through some difficult times in 2009, but we're very confident that we'll come through them. And I think these sort of investments are critical to make at this at this time.、Um, and then when we come out of the slowdown, we'll be in a much better shape to look after our customers and、uh, and、uh, grow our business in China. The annual sales volume of Dow Chemical currently exceeds three billion U.S. dollars, and like Dow Chemical, about 700 other foreign-funded companies in Shanghai Pudong New Area have added investments last year. There are a lot of big products. We calculated that about 100 big products with investments over 10 million U.S. dollars have enlarged their investments. Last year's contract foreign capital in Shanghai is expected to reach over 17 billion U.S. dollars, hitting a record high. And the third industry, including financial services, has become the main force to attract foreign capital, accounting for more than 70 percent of the total. This is because of the local government's emphasis on the adjustment of industrial structure, especially the foreign trade export industrial structure adjustment. In Shenzhen, the first production line of large-size LCD televisions in the Pearl River Delta region is going into operation. This project received investment expected to exceed 1.8 billion dollars from a Taiwan businessman. The annual output value will reach 1 billion dollars after the whole project is completed. Is expected to stimulate 4 billion U.S. dollars of business for its up and downstream sectors. In Shenzhen, the actual using foreign capital reached 3.93 billion dollars in the first 11 months last year. Guo Yuhua, CCTV. Well, China announced a 4 trillion yuan stimulus package last year to help counter a slump in economic growth. Since then, there have been high hopes for an upturn in the economic situation. Various projects in that package are currently underway throughout China to help jumpstart the economy and improve livelihoods. Li Shang reports. In Shanxi Province, a total of 36 guaranteed housing projects kicked off during the New Year holidays. Once established, the buildings will help nearly 14,000 low-income families who cannot afford to buy a home to settle down. Officials say the projects will also help to create about 12,000 jobs in the province. Other projects are aimed at enhancing environmental protection. The central government has allocated 250 million yuan to create over 150,000 hectares of shelter belt in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. This man estimates he will be able to make more than 5,000 yuan this winter by working on the project. Meanwhile, authorities have begun building a nearly 8,000-meter-long bridge on the Hanjiang River in central China's Hubei Province. The bridge is an essential part of the Hanyi Railway Line, which links Shanghai and Chengdu. In Liaoning Province, construction of a nuclear power plant is underway. Hongyanhe Nuclear Power Plant is the first such facility to be established in northeast China. It's expected that the power plant will play an important role in efforts to rejuvenate the Rust Belt in the country's northeast. Lisa, CCTV. Well, still with construction, construction continues on the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway, which began last April. As Sun Chaoyu tells us, the project is stimulating domestic demand for cement and steel. So far, 1,231 kilometers of the line has been completed, accounting for 92 percent of the project. One part still that we use for the bridge is 80,000 tons, which is enough to construct two bridge nests. Some of the steel is the new type of self-developed steel. 
A cement company from Anhui Province specially built a factory close to the railway construction project. Despite working 24 hours a day, its output still cannot meet demand. The business of several companies along the railway is booming. Their output volume has increased compared to last year. Calculations show that every 10,000 yuan invested in a railway needs 0.32 tons of steel, 2 tons of cement, and 25 working days. The total investment in the Beijing to Shanghai high-speed railway is expected to reach about 53 billion yuan. Estimates show that the entire project will use 5 million tons of steel and 27 million tons of cement. The construction also provides nearly 120,000 jobs. The proportion of the investment in railway and in machine and electronic sector is one to ten. In addition, 40 percent of investment is spent on local consumption. The Beijing to Shanghai high-speed railway will continue to enlarge its scale of construction this year. Currently, roadbed and bridge projects have been almost finished. Snaiyu, CCTV. The China Federation of Logistics and Purchasing says the country's main indicator for manufacturing activity, the Purchasing Managers Index, edged up to 41.2 in December. That number is up from November's record of 38.8.、Uh, PMI reading over 50 indicates expansion of activity in the manufacturing sector, while below 50 suggests contraction. China's PMA, a PMI rather, was conducted on the base of surveys directed at purchasing and supply managers of more than 700 manufacturers across the country. China's futures trading volume reached a record of nearly 72 trillion yuan in 2008. That's up 76 percent year on year. The China Futures Association says 1.36 billion contracts were traded, an increase of 87 percent. The most active contracts were for sugar in Zhengzhou, soybeans and soybean meal in Dalian, and copper and natural rubber in Shanghai. Meanwhile, trading in gold futures, the only new product launched last year, hit nearly one and a half trillion yuan in fewer than 12 months. And at the Dalian Commodity Exchange in northeast China, corn and soybean futures saw some bricks, brisk activity. The exchange saw a volume rise 130 percent to 27 and a half trillion yuan. This is Biz China on CCTV International. Time for a short break. More news just ahead. Banks and China.